Hey, good, good evening to everybody. Uh, and uh, I want to tell you that it's a blessing to be here. But before we get started, I just have two quick Bible jokes just to kind of loosen us up. The first one is this, a question. Who was the greatest comedian in the Bible? And the answer is Samson, because he brought the house down. <laughs> the second joke is this. What excuse did Adam give to his children as to why they no longer lived in Eden? The answer, your mother ate us out of house and home. Just a little humor, amen. Amen. It's good amen. to laugh. I believe the scripture says, it says that it's good to laugh. It's good for your spirit. Amen. Amen. It's preaching time. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon me. Move in me. Speak through me. Speak to me. Spirit of the living God, touch this congregation listening. We rebuke evil tactics coming against this sermon. Prick the hearts of those trying to block this message and silence them seven times seven in the matter that they are trying to calm now. And let the words of my mouth, Heavenly Father, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 The sermon title is Praying and Fasting in this challenging time. Amen. Praying and fasting in this challenging time. In the Matthew and Gospel, of the 17th chapter, the 16th through the 21st verses, Jesus continues his final journey of three. His final journey to Jerusalem, ministering through Galilee. Jesus had just left six days earlier, the region of Caesarea Philippi, near the southwestern base of Mount Hermon. For if we look back at Luke, the ninth chapter and the sixth verse, it tells us of Jesus' disciples going from village to village, preaching the gospel and healing people everywhere. For Jesus had given them power over all devils and to cure diseases. That's Luke, the ninth chapter and the first verse. Listen, church, the disciples may have become complacent, just like you and I become every now and then, or they had failed to pray. Jesus had already taught them that this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. That's in the marking text of the ninth chapter in the 29th verse. But the disciples of Jesus may also have lacked the power to perform this healing because they were jealous. Let the church say jealous. They had not been chosen earlier like Peter, James, and John to accompany Jesus up the mount of the transfiguration. Hello, somebody. Have you ever been jealous of someone? It takes away from your anointing and prayer power. Listen, church, just because people are apostles and pastors and doctors and disciples, prophets, etc., doesn't mean they don't get jealous like Jesus' disciples could have possibly done here resulting in their not being able to cast out the demon. 
out of this lunatic son. Some versions of the Bible say that he was an epileptic. If we look at Matthew, the 17th chapter in the 15th verse, it states, Lord have mercy on my son for he is lunatic and so vexed for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. See, this can, this can came out by fasting and praying. Church, what do you fast and pray for? Do you fast and pray for your health, for wealth, for notoriety, for that position that you want? What do you fast for? Well, church, let me just take a hermeneutical liberty and assert that Jesus was telling the disciples to subject their fleshly habits and ways for this type of healing came out only by fasting, which means crucifying your flesh and praying, which is petitioning God, praising God and listening to God. In Galatians, the fifth chapter, the 19th through the 21st verse, listen church, it says, it states, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, verse 20, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, verse 21, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Church, this is not me talking. This is the Bible, the good book. And we all are in the flesh and we all battle these things. And if you are battling against these things, these works of the flesh, we have to pray and fast. And if you don't know the definitions of some of these things, such as emulations and variants, I ask that you look and Google these up so that you will know. Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, to study, to show yourself approved unto God that a workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Then there comes prayer. We should always pray. It comes in full circle. So we have to pray so that we will know how to go to the Lord when we go through tests and trials. And we also have to know about the fruits of the spirit. If you go to Galatians, the fifth chapter, in the 22nd through the 26th verse, let's go there. It talks about the fruits of the spirit. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. These are hopeful things. Long suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. See, it goes in circles. You crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. See, you blessed to be a blessing. You not stop blessed for people that's to look up to you and, oh, this person is this, this person is that. You are blessed to be a blessing. Service is the price you pay to be on this earth. Service is. The greatest amongst you is a servant. That's what Jesus said. Are you a servant? Do you aspire to be a servant? Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Well, lastly, in John, the 10th chapter, in the 10th verse, states that the thief cometh, not but, but for to steal and to kill 
and to destroy. And Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have life more abundantly. As the elder stated last night, that we need to, to minister to people for people have, are going through a, a mighty time right now. People are losing their mothers, their fathers, their brothers, their sisters, their cousins, their aunts and uncles to COVID. They need to hold on to something. They need a rock, a foundation. And they need to hold on to the rock. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That rock is Jesus. He is the one. That rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. I feel the Holy Spirit when I say that. Your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. You need the Bible in times like these. You need the Bible to read the Bible, hallelujah. See, we're going through something right now. But this is not the only time we've gone through things like this. People have gone through smallpox, AIDS, yellow fever, measles, diphtheria, influenza, cholera, tuberculosis, hepatitis. And I want to tell you that we need to wear your mask. Wash your hands properly. Stay six feet apart. Follow your proper guidelines. You need to wash your hands and, 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 and we need to take care of ourselves. Because see, we're losing mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, grandmothers and grandfathers, cousins, friends and classmates, neighbors. This is real. Just because some people are brainwashed by our political movement doesn't mean it's not real. Don't wait till you see a relative in the casket before you think it's real. I was telling a young man, he said, well, I don't know anybody who's lost anyone. And I told him, well, I know someone who's lost someone, my sister, my aunt, and a cousin. He said, well, I'll tell you what. And he told me later on, you touched me. And I went and I got the shot. And he said, I thank you for telling me that. See, see church, you have to know Jesus for yourself. This is a testimony. When I was a young preacher, I had the honor to eulogize Reverend G.J. Jackson's wife. She was a member of Oak Grove, Sister Carrie Jackson. And it was a long service for Reverend G.J. Jackson had a great, left a great mark in this area. The, the service was over two and a half hours. And I was a young preacher and Reverend Brenda Davis was a young, a uh, young preacher and we were trying to save money so we got in the same car trying to save money and we didn't we didn't bring any food with us because we thought we would get something afterwards and there was another service in Homer so here we are hungry and we are driving down the road going to Homer do you know we fell asleep in the car and we were probably in the car 20 30 minutes both sleep God took care of us some of you have had the same experience. God is real. Jesus is real. Some of you know that if it weren't for God, you would not be here now. He's kept you from having a wreck. He's kept you from falling. He's kept you in so many ways. That's right. So you have to know this. You have to know that Jesus is your hope. Mm. Jesus is your peace. Mm -hmm. Jesus is your battle fighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus is your comforter. Yes. Jesus is father when you're fatherless. Yes. When your father's gone home. Yes. Jesus is a mother. Yeah. Uh -huh. When your mother has gone home. 
Yes. Jesus will be there. Yes. He has gone home. Yes. Jesus will be there. Yes. Father and sister have gone on home. Yes. I know you're right when about that. When your husband is going home. Yeah. When your wife is going home. Yeah. Do you know this? Mm. He's the Lord and Savior. Yeah. Yes. And don't think it's not going to happen to you. Yeah. Come on Let's now. On yes. Keep on living. Yeah. You're going to shed some tears in this thing. Yeah. Yes. Your heart's going to break in this thing. Yeah. Yes. He will wipe away your tears. Yes, yes he will. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Let's know this, young people. You might get talked about. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. But you know what Jesus did, too? Yes, he will. But I want you to do this. Uh -huh. Spend some time reading the Bible. Yes. And watch God move in your life. Yes. You act like Jesus. Hmm. Before you get treated like Jesus. Yes. Jesus was ostracized. Yes. People didn't like Jesus. That's right. But you know what? What? He, he, he touched lives. <laughs> yes. Lord, he made a way for people. Yes, yes he, he did. Because the more you talked about, the yeah. more you lied on. Mm-hmm. Do you know you affect people more? Hallelujah. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, uh -huh. too hard for God. Yeah. Yes. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I didn't want to cry. Amen. Sometimes it hits you. Yeah. yeah. If you don't hit you, if you don't cry, you have strokes. Well, I mean, I didn't have a stroke. Amen. Yeah, Thank right. you, Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Testify. Testify. Yes, yes, Lord. All right. Hallelujah. For the invitation of. I think it's for the elders to speak now, I believe. 